How's it going guys? We are back with a Destiny 2 video. Yes, it is not an Anthem video, it is a Destiny 2 video. In this video there will be no prompts, there will be no video for you to really see. All I ask is that you sit down and listen to what I have to say. I'll be talking about Destiny 2, the split between Bungie and Activision, giving my view and perspective as to how this is affecting everything, how will it affect everything, and ultimately where Bungie is heading within the next two years. So with that said, on with the video. I often talk about the good times when I refer to Final Fantasy XI, a game that required so much grinding it makes games like Destiny look like failed attempts. But as with everything, you move on. And so did my team, and when I was left alone to rebuild, I decided it was time for me too. Final Fantasy XI wasn't great tech-wise, what made it so great was the community. To this day, there has been none better, and I can openly say that. Games back then were heavily community driven. When I encountered Destiny, I jumped in to see what it was about. As I played and got to level 20, joined clans, I soon came to the realisation that after a long time of searching, I may have found what I was looking for. A fun game to play, and a great community. Legion of Light was the clan I finally came across, a collection of about 60-70 to 70 players who were raiding almost daily, helping each other out, Nightfalls, Prison of Elders, the works. People didn't care if they needed it or not, it was playing with their friends that was important. A bond was forged with each and every one, and a forged bond was to be everlasting. When someone got their galahorn, it wasn't met with someone laughing at the other players, it was met with a loud cheer. It was surreal, I finally realised that the community I so yearned for since leaving Final Fantasy XI behind was here. I was home. At last. My time in Destiny 1 through the base game to Crota's End, the Prison of Elders and the Taken King wouldn't be an understatement to say were some of the greatest moments in my gaming life to this day. They were now up there with the Valkyrie Dunes trains running for your life to Selbina. My search was over, but again, like everything, it wasn't to last forever. The clan broke after the clan took a different direction. Everyone split and the bond forged for two years was broken. Rise of Iron came and I completed everything I wanted to before looking back at Destiny and saying my farewell with no bonds to keep me tied to the game. However, I would not speak ill of Destiny, for it provided me with something I wanted for a long time, a second time, a home away from home, where I could be who I wanted to be. I was grateful for this. The search began once more. The Division came along with Warframe, but they simply didn't have that feeling. It was not there. Sure, I enjoyed them, but they were not home. Then Destiny 2 was announced. The world stood up and took note. They were excited. I was excited. I played the demo and was immediately hooked. Destiny, like Final Fantasy XI, will always have a special place in my heart. No matter how bad the times get, I stuck with Destiny. I was even removed from the clan I was in for simply defending and enjoying the experience when others were not. Yes, this actually happened. So when I see people questioning me and saying I hate the game, this is as far from the truth as one can possibly get. However, it is no secret that the biggest thing missing to me in Destiny is the community. Yes, the community banded together in recent times to solve the Niobe puzzle, but that was handled so badly by Bungie it ruined the whole event. When I released my review of Destiny 2, I gave it a strong 6.9 out of 10, not because it was a bad game. But I could already see two weeks on that there were serious flaws in the game. Exotics were dropping too early, too often, only one endgame encounter, nightfalls made bad forcing you to speedrun them, among other things. But I played through religiously, and the same with Curse of Osiris and Warmind. Then Forsaken landed, and there were vast improvements. Destiny 2 was finally starting to feel like Destiny 1 again, just something was missing. The community was missing. Though I have played Destiny over 1,500 hours now, I still to this day cannot say I'm home. Warmind was the closest it came to that, and here lies my concerns. Vicarious Visions was the one that worked on Warmind. They are also responsible for the PC port. They were also responsible for the puzzles that accompany the DLC, both in game and real world. If you're not aware, Vicarious Visions are owned by Activision. So removing the empty base game, Curse of Osiris, and the frustrating Forsaken with its hellish RNG, the lacklustre and poor excuse that is the Black Armoury, the only DLC I enjoyed through and through, and still to this day have things that actually matter to me to do, is Warmind for the most part. 
So with Activision leaving and splitting from Bungie, who is losing out here most? What does this mean to the rest of us? Forsaken was truly a good expansion. The death of Cade came and went and now no monument, nothing was erected in his name. Cade, like every other NPC, has become pointless and forgotten. Yes, I fully agree the microtransaction issues were almost completely Activision. The original story being tarnished was again Activision, due to them wanting the game to be a 16 and not an 18 to reach a wider audience. I get this, and I totally understand this. But the situation Destiny 2 is in cannot be solely placed on Activision, and those thinking that is the case will soon find they are misguided in their way of thinking. With the split in motion, it now makes sense why the annual pass exists. There is no budget to make anything else, and Bungie need money to fund expansions and looking ahead, work that is currently underway on Destiny 3. This was their last way, in essence, to pay off Activision as well and end on a sweet note. But to me, this wasn't Bungie initiating the split, but more Activision jumping ship, and when the opportunity arose, Bungie mutually agreed to part ways. I am an avid fan of Destiny, and will be forevermore. I have stuck by them for the last four years and will continue to do so. You may have noticed I stopped doing content in Destiny. This was for one reason. There was hardly any content to report on. I know how everyone loves their cheese videos and stuff like that, but if that's all I have to go on, well, that's kinda sad. I want relevant content to make news on, and that wasn't available. But that's a content creator issue and not a game. But this is simply just explaining why I've been missing from the Destiny community and not making content. The Niobe Labs was a disaster. When you look at history, Whisper of the Worm was an additional event, not main event. Outbreak Prime was additional, not the main. Black Spindle, hidden secretly in a mission, again additional to the main content. These are ones I remember off head, but all share one fundamental thing. They are secrets to find, incomplete, and you get an awesome reward at the end. Not a shoddy emblem and a pointless ghost. To add more salt to this, it blocked content people took a day off of work to play. How can such things be allowed to pass? How can anyone think this is a good idea? Even Vicarious Vision's puzzle, which led to real world rewards, was additional, not the main event, not the main content. This is why the Naomi Labs failed. Not to mention, Puzzle 6 was just bad and 7 was missing the clue entirely. It just seems like bad decisions are being made over and over again at Camp Bungie, and there seems to be no end. The state of the RNG in Destiny is pretty bad. There is a deep intrinsic lore within Destiny that the developers don't want you to read. It's so bad that you're better off going to a website and simply reading it all there. Titles which are supposed to be accomplishments are tied to such bad RNG that even earning one of these is no longer earning because it's purely RNG based. The final straw for many was the Triumphs and how pointless they are. They offer nothing like the Book of Triumphs from Destiny 1. In fact I'd go as far as saying they are not a tenth of what they were. Sandbox updates taking 3-6 to six months is literally unacceptable. The TWAB this week since the release of Forsaken was highlighting its first sandbox update. For a game that so heavily promotes PvP, how can this be deemed acceptable by any standard? The update is for supers by majority, but when there is a severe lack of content and the forges really offer nothing, the ship has sailed. With so much wrong with the game at present, this ultimately leads me back to the beginning of the video. The community aspect is no longer there. This is the biggest issue. So many communities, clans, are dissolving, and Destiny was never designed to be a solo experience. When you remove the community, and a home. You're left with a shell, and sadly that's what Bungie has done. The split from Activision is a double-edged sword. For four years they have been hiding behind Activision, blaming them for everything, just like the community has. I for one am happy they have parted ways, but the next update, after disaster that will be the annual pass, will need to be the greatest thing in Destiny history. It needs to be the Taking King level of greatness, and in order to win those that have already left, it needs to be free. I see no other real way forward. They need goodwill. Simply leaving Activision behind isn't enough. People have been burnt for years, and the final straw was the lack of sandbox updates, bugs still present. I mean, it's impossible right now to get the term exotic. Yes, impossible. Yet no one at Bungie cares to fix the issue. Why? Is that Activision? I could get a refund right now on my game because you sold me a game I cannot fully enjoy or fully access, so Activision definitely wouldn't want this. As such, it can't be Activision. It's Bungie. 
and they've known about the issue. There's multiple posts in the help thread. They don't care. I hope Bungie can turn things round. I really do. I'll be here reporting on Destiny 2 news along the way. I'll cover the TWAB as well, but ultimately, if they want to make headway into getting people back, they need to fix the game that's currently just not fun to play for the most part. Get creative. Make Destiny great again. We saw what they could do with Forsaken, the Whisper of the Worm quest, and the Taken King before that. And for crying out loud, make lore drops 100% till you have it. Why are you encouraging people to AFK in forges so they can get the lore? This is dumb. The easiest way to get the lore books right now in the forge is to AFK for 10 hours and come back. Or AFK, have your controller moving forward, go sleep and wake up and you should have the majority of them. How can Bungie create content to be designed and force people to unlock them in this way? No one in their right mind is going to go and do 500 forges. It's just not going to happen. The content isn't fun. Throwing balls into a middle pillar isn't fun, especially when half the balls you throw bounce off. I mean, law being RNG is just the silliest thing I've seen. I've had to read it at Ishtar, and that should never be the case, ever. You've put it in the game. Why would you force me to go out of the game to read it? When this is done and Bungie take Destiny and its success seriously again, the community will be back. Destiny isn't dead. However, it does lie in the balance, and it's down to Bungie now to save it. The community is here waiting. The community is waiting on Bungie to react. But I just don't feel the annual pass will do any good at this point. The annual pass, in my honest opinion, was just a cheap cash in with the split impending. I mean, the split would have been known at least four or five months before this and things would have gone into motion. It's not something that just decided now. It's not something that appeared now. This is something that they knew about for quite some time before the annual pass was even mentioned or revealed. And it's because of this I feel Bungie has a lot to answer for. I feel they need to make a lot of headway with goodwill. Their name and brand alone at this point will not save them. So as I said moments ago, the community is here waiting. Over to you Bungie. Make us proud. Thanks for listening everyone. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be covering the Twab tomorrow. And until then, in the glorious days of the Traveller, remain legend.